In this video, we're going to begin our discussion about translation, and this will be broken up into two different parts, uh, part one um, and then part two, obviously, uh, and we're looking at IB 3.5 and 7.4 sections. Now, we've been talking about transcription translation. Uh, our first video was looking specifically at transcription and what happens during that process and how that process works. And in these next two parts, uh, next two videos, we're going to look more specifically at translation and some of the concepts and then the actual process of translation and taking that messenger RNA that's been formed through transcription and using a ribosome and transfer RNA to actually make a polypeptide chain. And so when we start by looking at translation, the first thing that we need to know is that translation, just like transcription, occurs in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Um, additionally, uh, there's a couple different types of ribosomes that we've talked about um, earlier in our cell units. Uh, we have free-floating ribosomes that are just found in the cytoplasm, and then we also have ribosomes that are found uh, attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the free-floating ribosomes are synthesizing proteins primarily for the use within or inside of the cell. Uh, those that are found on the ER, the ribosomes that are found on the ER, are prim primarily used to synthesize proteins for secretion or for the use of in lysosomes. Um, and so those have different functions. Those, uh, depending on the location of the ribosome, they can have some different functions. Um, additionally, as, as we start talking about the translation process, um, a ribosome is, is going to be used to help read the code on messenger RNA and to connect amino acids to make a polypeptide chain. Well, one ribosome can start that process and initiate that process. Uh, in something called a polysome, um, this is a situation or an occurrence where there are multiple ribosomes on the same strand of messenger RNA. So if we have a very long strand of messenger RNA, uh, multiple ribosomes can be on that same strand and be transcribing or translating, excuse me, uh, that messenger RNA code. And so one ribosome is going to start, and once that ribosome has moved far enough down the chain of the messenger RNA, another ribosome can start. And so we have multiple ribosomes on the messenger RNA at the same time, and this really helps to speed up the translation of this particular polypeptide chain. It's just a way to enhance or in, uh, increase the speed at which, at which this polypeptide is made. Um, and in translation, we're using messenger RNA to connect amino acids, uh, the peptide bonds uh, between those amino acids, to form a polypeptide chain, which is a protein. And, and that's really what this whole process is looking at, is creating those proteins uh, through the instructions from DNA and a specific uh, gene on that DNA sequence. And if we think back to DNA and to chromosomes, uh, chromosome is a condensed form of that DNA with some pr proteins to help stabilize it. Um, a specific section on that chromosome or within that DNA uh, we call a gene. And that gene is responsible or has the instructions for making a particular protein and that's what we're seeing through this process of transcription and translation. Now translation can be broken up into a couple different parts and we'll look at these more uh, specifically when we look at the different steps. But you do need to know and be able to state that translation consists of initiation, which is like starting the process, elongation, which is essentially um, adding more amino acids, uh, translocation, which is the, the movement portion, and then termination, which is the actual ending of the translation process. Uh, you need to know and be able to state uh, that these four steps uh, are part of translation. Now before we get into those steps, a couple more uh, pieces of background information we need to have. Um, the first being a peptide bond. And a peptide bond is what is connecting two amino acids together. So here we've got amino acid 1, amino acid 2, and we're going to connect these through a peptide bond. And the bonding of this occurs in a specific way. Um, one, this would be a dehydration synthesis, as we've talked about back in our chemistry of life units. Uh, we're removing water from our two molecules. And so by joining these two, we're removing water. So we're taking off an OH from our first amino acid and an H uh, molecule from our second amino acid. And thereby we get water, and then we've connected these two amino acids. Now, the peptide bond uh, specifically forms between the carboxyl group, uh, which is right here, um, the carboxyl group right here, and the uh, amine group right here on the second amino acid. And so you can see the, the peptide bond forms between this carbon of the carboxyl group and the nitrogen of the amino group, amine group, um, and we've re removed the OH from the carboxyl group 
and an H from the amine group uh, in order to form this peptide bond. Um, some other background information that's really helpful and that we need to, to understand and to know in order to explain this translation process. Um, on our messenger RNA, we have a series of three nucleotides or nitrogen bases. And so this one happens to be U for uracil, um, C for cytosine, and then we have a cytosine or a uracil, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so these three nitrogen bases, or th these three different nucleotides here, this is part of the overall messenger RNA. But three nucleotides on messenger RNA make up something called a codon. And a codon is simply um, just three nitrogen bases, or three different nucleotides. The opposite of that is on tRNA. Here's our tRNA loop. And we call this the anticodon. So the anticodon matches with, or is complementary to the codon. Um, you can see that U would match with uh, A, adenine matches with uracil, guanine matches with cytosine, and then guanine matches with cytosine here. Now, um, we don't have to get into the specifics of this for, for the IB curriculum, but it is kind of interesting and important to know that the third nucleotide, or the third nitrogen base on a codon, uh, is a little bit more flexible in terms of, in terms of its matching. Uh, it can sometimes, um, it, can, it can change, it can, it's a little bit more flexible, it's bendable, and so we call this the wobble position. And basically what that means is that the anti, uh, the matching pairs on the codon and the anticodon can sometimes flip-flop. And so in this case, uh, we could see a, a U for uracil um, matching with a guanine. Uh, this doesn't always happen. Uh, it does happen sometimes. Um, and this helps to explain why we see uh, actually less um, codons than are, than are present uh, for amino acids. There's less combinations. Um, and so the, the transfer RNA is matching with the messenger RNA. And this happens because of the complementary or matching uh, pairs of nucleotides, anticodon on the transfer RNA, codon on the messenger RNA. The next part that we want to look at is specifically the ribosome structure. Uh, and ribosomes are made of ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, as well as proteins. And there's two parts to a ribosome. Uh, we have a ribosome small subunit, which is this portion here, and the large subunit, which is obviously larger. And these two pieces are, are separated at first. And when translation begins, they come together, and they connect with the messenger RNA, which is this strand right here. And the messenger RNA strand actually connects to the small ribosomal subunit. Um, and there's some specific parts of the uh, large subunit that we want to take note of. There's three, there's actually three different sites where transfer RNAs can connect to. The first is called the A site, the second is called the P site, and the third is called the E site. And those are in that correct order, the A, P, and E. Um, and as we'll see when we go through the steps of translation, the P site is where um, the, the transfer RNA uh, the amino acids are going to connect or bond to one another, and the E site is where they're discharged. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer in text here. Um, it's, the ribosome is made of a large and a small subunit. Uh, it has two different parts. Um, they're made from ribosomes, uh, ribosomal RNA and proteins. Uh, has three sites for binding, the A site, the P site, and the E site. Um, an interesting note is only two transfer RNA molecules at one time can bind to a ribosome. Uh, so that E site is for the, the kicking off or the ejecting of that, that uh, transfer RNA once it's delivered its amino acid. Um, and the messenger RNA is binding to or is connected to the ribosome on the small subunit. The last portion for this video today is looking at the specifics of one gene equaling one polypeptide. And as I talked about a little bit earlier in the video, one gene has the instructions to make one protein. And really what that means is that the DNA sequence has a uh, sequence of, of nucleotides, uh, which gets transcribed into messenger RNA. That code's taken out into the cytoplasm or to the rough ER uh, where that protein is going to be made. And that sequence of messenger RNA calls for or matches up very specifically with specific uh, transfer RNA molecules that have specific amino acids. In our next video, we'll look at how those amino acids and transfer RNAs are connected. And so because of this messenger RNA code that that's comes from or derived from the DNA molecule, we have a very specific sequence of amino acids that are connected together, and that creates this one polypeptide or one protein. Um, a polypeptide protein is formed by connecting amino acids through our peptide bonds, as we saw. Uh, about 20 amino acids provide really a large number of possibilities. There's a huge number 
uh, possibilities uh, of how these could be differently connected. Um, and so that gene sequence in the DNA provides a sequence to make messenger RNA, and really thus it's providing instructions to, to form that polypeptide because it's the messenger RNA has to match with specific transfer RNA molecules. Uh, the sequence is organized into triplets of bases, which we call codons, and thus one gene contains a sequence for one polypeptide or one protein. Um, genes can be of varying lengths. Uh, they can be really long uh, in terms of the number of, of nucleotides, or they can be really short. It just it primarily depends on the gene. So that's our introduction for translation. In the next video, we'll look specifically at how the transfer RNA molecule and the specific amino acid are connected, as well as the specific step steps to translation.